Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at the Angular Structural Directive NG4. I will show you how to use this directive when sourced from an array and object from your component. We will look at how to bind the input with a combo box, a radio button list, HTML table, and an unordered list. We'll also look at several exported values that can be used as alias local variables like the index, count, first and last, and odd and even. Are you ready? Let's do this. Before we dive into the code, let me give you a sneak preview of what this video is about. Here you can see I'm sourcing data from an inline array. In this example, we're using one of the exported values, index. As you can see here, there are several exported values we can use. You can use more than one exported value per expression, just comma separate them, as I have done in this example. Your expression can span several lines, just make sure your open quote and close quote match. In our first example, notice that I'm attaching the directive ng4 to li. li is the element I want to repeat. And it will repeat for one, two, three, four, five times. A gets assigned to CH, and then I display it. You can see over here where I show A to E. That's example one. In our second example, we're using two exported values, index and count. And notice I'm saying let I equals index, comma, let CNT equals count. Notice my output. I said increment i by one because we know index starts at zero. So one of n, so one of seven, all the way down to g. That's our second example. In our next example, notice I just switched the way we use these exported values. Now I'm saying index as i, comma, count as cnt, the same line being printed. And that is our third example. Let us begin with what this form will look like. Notice here that we have a radio button list. So I'll have a label and then I'll get north, east, southwest. And then when I click on one of these, I actually get the value uh, down here. You can see that. And then notice I can hover over and it tells me its angle. See that north is zero, south should be 180, and west should be 270. So that is what we're gonna do in this uh, example. Now, where does it all begin? Well, let's say it begins in the component. And then right away, you see that I have two interfaces. I have a compass interface and a direction interface. So we had to create a compass interface export interface compass dir id question mark means it's nullable and that is our first interface compass our second interface is direction id dir name and degrees notice string string number then when we're in our component notice that my model the value of the actual form all the fields would go in here in this example, we only have one, it's the radio button. And you remember compass is our interface. Now the second interface, direction, remember ID, DIR name and degrees, those are those. Now make sure that you import those and then let's go take a look at the HTML. Now the HTML starts with form to form. We have to have that. And then notice here on line nine, I begin my outside spam. Now this span is my ng4, and I'm saying let d of directions. Now directions was my object in my component. Then I'm going to loop over this span, and then this first one saying, hey, we have a tooltip here. And that tooltip is going to wrap around the entire button and the text so if a user comes and places anywhere over there, I can get the balloon help. You see that? Doesn't matter where you're at, I can get the balloon help. 
So that's why I put the span on the outside. Now the next one is we have our radio button. And notice we're going to say ID equals that ID. Now notice when we do a label for, what that means is if a user clicks on the actual radio button on this, I still select the value. And I'm selecting it because of this for command in the label. That makes sense? Okay, cool. Then the last thing we need to talk about is ng model. Notice I'm doing two-way binding here. This is my object name, model compass. Model compass is the name of our object. This is its type. It's an interface called compass. I think you see all the steps now. Just follow these steps to add a radio button to your next form. This example is based on the radio button code that we just provided. Now this right here is a table example. And notice here on line six, I begin with a table and 21 I end. So tables have a head and then can have one too many bodies. And notice here on line 14, I want to repeat this zone right here. So I'm gonna say ng4 let dir of directions. Now directions was formulated here on line 16. I'm using this interface. I have an array of direction. My variable name is directions. It's an object, an array of objects. Now when we look at our HTML, I take my variable name in the let statement and I say dir.id, dir name and dir degrees. That right there provides me my output. And as you see, the output here is very easy to read. And I'm using Bootstrap as my CSS styling and it allows us to do things like a hovering. See how it does that hovering. Then the border is this border that goes around it, the striping, every other line, and just the table command on its own. Then I just use basic styling for the header. Notice it's a uh, Background is black and the foreground color is white. So there you have the table example. In this example, we're going to be doing a drop down combo, and that is using the select element. Now, the code behind is all using the same code that we used with our drop down combo and our uh, table demo. But this will be a little different because we're doing a drop down combo. So, using the select control, notice I'm saying form control. Well, form control actually comes from Bootstrap, so that's what I'll be using. Now, the name is compass, the ID is compass, and notice we're using two way binding. It goes to the same model that we've been using, model compass. And it only has one field in there called DIR ID. Now notice we have two options. Let's take a look at this first. Notice it says direction and then some blank over here. Notice I say ID equals because I just want to see what's being passed in. And right now undefined is being passed in. So what happens when we pass in undefined is if the model dir id equals undefined, then I'm going to give it undefined and I'm going to print out this text right here, select compass direction. And that's what we see here. So you know that undefined is the value. Let's confirm that. And there it is. It is undefined. Now, if I set this to south, notice as soon as I do that, the button refreshed over here and notice now my direction is south and the Drop down combo was initialized to use self. Now let's back to the HTML. Now, so you understand this first option and you understand how important it is and you understand how it got initialized. Now, the second option is where we're going to use ng4. Now, notice here I say let dir of directions. Remember, directions is our object. And from that object, I'm going to get the value dir id and selected if dird equals what is in the object. So initially when we come through there, I either get this one or I got like west as you just saw. 
but normally a user will come over to the drop down combo, click it, and then be able to select on a value. Notice the object that contains our form gets updated immediately. I think you got it. So select to select uses our label and that is the end of this video. You now know how to do a drop down combo. And there you have it team. This video is complete. I hope the examples I used were beneficial and you're able to take away a nugget or two. If you have any questions or comments about the contents of this video, please leave a message below. And thank you for choosing my channel, Software Nuggets, to watch this video about the NG4 directive. If you feel this video is a video you can refer to a colleague, please consider clicking on the like button. And if you want to see more videos from Software Nugget, well, subscribing is one way to stay connected. Okay team, that's all I have. See you in my next video. Adios.